everyone, it is me, TNTN, and I am back with a really fun and super cool tutorial. I hope that you guys enjoy it, but let's just get right on into it. So a while back in one of my Let's Play videos, I said that I wasn't going to do many tutorials anymore. Uh, if you guys have like any complaints, uh, like if you guys really want me to do another tutorial, let me know down in the comments. And I got a comment from Killer Gaming and GD, and his comment just said tutorial, 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 tutorial. This went on for like about 50 more tutorials, and I decided why not. <laughs> so. Uh, back to square one of making a tutorial is figuring out something to do. Now this was one of my least favorite parts, but I did some searching and Doc, I think 78 is his name, DocM78, uh, he is a very famous YouTuber on the Hermitcraft server, if you guys want to go check him out, the link in the description below. Uh, he's making a super awesome creeper cannon uh, in like this prank war that's going on in the Hermitcraft server. And I thought that it was so cool, so I didn't tr look up this. I, I like I, I didn't really watch Doc that much, uh, and I didn't really want to see how he planned to make it. So I decided to go f uh, do my best to do it myself, and I, I'm actually quite proud of myself. So I thought I should come and share it with you guys today. So let's just start. So first, how effective is this thing? Well, if we spawn a creeper right here, and we press this button, I disabled um, the uh, particles that TNT makes, and you can see that the creeper disappears immediately. However, the creeper isn't dead, considering all this TNT, and that is because of a very important potion, which is called, a, a, well, it's a splash potion, but it's the Turtle Master. And what this does is it gives you really high resistance, and it basically allows you to survive lots of very harsh attacks, such as TNT. So as I press this button, it's basically splashing out this potion, uh, which is making the Keeper have really, really high resistance, and it's also splashing out slow falling, so once it lands, uh, once it like gets really high up into the air, it'll not just fall down to its doom. So really fast, I'm going to demonstrate this one more time, how fast this guy goes up in the air. And then one more thing that I want to show you guys, check out how powerful this is. I'm, I'm just standing from like here, that's pretty far distance away considering, okay so not the best examples. But a better example is if we place a creeper here, we press this button, we go into spectator mode really fast and go see what the creeper is seeing, and then we get launched off and you'll see that my computer totally crashes and freezes. Uh, this is actually just the game freaking out for some reason, as you guys can probably see the claws are still moving and everything. Uh, but if we hit shift and get out of spectator mode, uh, just like a f five, five minutes or something, then we'll actually be where the creeper is now. So I'm going to cut. Alright, so hopefully my computer will loosen the creeper because sometimes it does not. It's only been actually like one minute, five minutes was an exaggeration. But, ooh, the creeper has actually landed, which I was not expecting. Uh, but if we look, we're at negative uh, 22. Now this means nothing to you guys because you don't know how far away we are, but if we head all the way over here, this we're we were at positive ten, so that's like um hundred and thirty, right? Yeah, yeah, because we're yeah, uh, so that's actually like really far. But you guys might be thinking, man, dude, it crashed. That's totally not true. Like yeah, you could just be making everything up. But I'm not, because I'll show you guys right now by doing the TNT cannon on myself, and this time it won't crash because Minecraft's weird, <laughs> and it's on myself, not on a creeper. But as you'll see, we're falling very, very slowly to take away fall damage, but let's just drink some milk to take away that slow falling effect, and uh, we should be falling fairly quickly. And you can see already that we traveled 135 blocks, it always varies. And that's a crazy amount, guys. So, Creeper, you can totally blow up people's bases using Creepers and sending them, like, way far out. Uh, now, the only problem is I don't know how to get a Creeper into this place, I was thinking. But I, I don't want to blow this thing up. But I was kind of, like, thinking, you know, putting a trapped door over here. 
and then having it open and then spawning a creeper, well not spawning, but finding a creeper and like having it chase you. And I'm pretty sure they think that this is a solid block or something like that. So maybe that would work? Actually I think that you have to have it like... Uh, no... Wait, yeah you have to have it like that and have both of them open. I'm pretty sure then they'll think that everything's like correct. Uh, I'm actually going to go do a little bit of research on that. Go into survival mode. Alright, he's targeting me. Let's jump across that. And he should. Yep, he just fell right down. And then from here, we just press the button. And we're good to go. So, oh, well, he's in the water. So it actually will destroy anything. But it will kill me. Okay, team, we get it. Just tell me how to build it. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so, as you guys can see, there's quite a bit of redstone and timing and looping around over here. But it's actually really basic, and it gets you really good range. I mean, like, as you guys saw, it got me, like, 120-whatever blocks. But sometimes this can get, like, up to 170 blocks, which is pretty, pretty darn crazy. So, as you guys can probably tell, I got us this nice flat stone area to start building this whole mess again. So the first step is to dig down 19 blocks, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So you're going to need 57 dispensers uh, if you want to make it as powerful as mine, uh, but I'm, I'm, I believe in you guys, I'm sure you guys can do it. So now what you guys want to do is you want to dig down three um, three of like the edges, like this, okay, so this is the middle, right? You want to go dig down this guy, this guy, and this guy. And basically this is going to decide which way your cannon fires. In this case, my cannon is going to fire this way. But like, let's say that I filled this back up right here, and instead I destroyed this half, then my cannon, cannon would fire that way. Uh, I hope that makes sense. But anyway, I'm just going to make it so that's facing this direction. Now what you need to do is you need to place all your dispensers, all 57 of them, as I said earlier, facing towards the middle in these kind of gaps right here. So also in this place right here, and then I'll also be doing it on the other side. But this is quite boring to watch, so I'm going to do a cut. Once you have all the dispensers placed, you have to fill each and every one up with TNT. The amount of TNT you have in each dispenser, the amount you can fire. So like I have 64 in this, uh, 9 stacks of 64, so I can fire this 64 times 9 times, which equals 576. Uh, but like if I only have a stack, then I can only fire this 40, 64 times. I mean, like, yeah, I, I think you guys get it. It's pretty simple. So, I would just like to say really fast that I'm sorry for the poor audio in those last clips. I forgot to plug in my Blue Yeti, so that's great. Anyway, now, since you have all this now loaded up with TNT, that is great. Uh, quick warning, though, it's going to be kind of difficult to load these up with TNT again, so I suggest getting a bunch of TNT in here the first time. So, anyway, now you should have something that looks kind of like this. Now, what you want to do is you want to come down here. Well, well, you want to go over here. It's going to be hard for people in survival, but you want to dig out a little bit, and you basically want to place a block every other dispenser like that, and make sure that this one is, like, not, not in it. Well, anyway, uh, so you're just going to continue this all the way down, and then you're also going to do it for these dispensers too, like so. So I'm going to finish up with this. Once you have done that, you just want to bring these out uh, three blocks. These ones, you should bring out three blocks, this one two blocks, and you want to do this for each and every one. Now that you have all these platforms, what you want to do is you want to take some repeaters, and for the seven uh, layers down at the bottom, so this is the second, third, you just want to place repeaters at one ticks. So that's third, this is fourth, fifth, sixth, and then seventh and then you want to stop here because we're going to kind of be messing around with a lot of stuff now just really fast this is going to be a big messy project just another quick warning about that 
it's it's big and it's quite messy. Uh, but anyway, what you want to do now is you want to take some redstone and you want to just connect up all these repeaters together like so. Uh, actually, you know, no, no, no. Connect every single one up with repeaters. I, I don't really know what I was thinking, guys. Yeah, you, 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 you do them all. Now what you want to do is you want to come and you want to make a slab tower, I think they're called. Basically, you want slabs kind of going up like this. So you can have one here like this and like this. And right here and right here and right here and right here. And basically, you continue all this up. So once you have all the slabs, it should look like this, and you want to put redstone on each and every one of them. So it should kind of just look like this, and we want a repeater going into this block. So now, once you have all that, you want to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. On the 11th slab, you want to place a block, and then a repeater, and then you want to bring this out just a little bit bit like so so once you have that what you want to do is you want to have it go yeah da, da, da. put a redstone uh here redstone here bring it up a block put redstone on it bring it up a block put redstone on it put a repeater going into this slab and then you're all good basically what this will do is it will continue this redstone uh output uh, this red the, the, the powered redstone and it'll bring it all the way up instead of stopping halfway now, as you can see here, what I have done is I basically just put some soul sand down here, and then I filled this all up with water, and that will make us a water stream going upwards. And then I just destroyed a few blocks over here to have it go this way, and then I put some walls, and that's basically all I have done. Kind of forgot, if you do not want your thing to end up looking like this big old mess, then what you want to do is you want to place a slab. I can't believe I forgot to place it. Luckily, no damage done. But, it, yeah, please be careful about that. Please remember to place the slab there. Please, 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 guys. <sighs> so, going back. Uh, if you press this button, you will see that all the TNT is launched up. And it will travel down over here. And then it will all explode. Now... Now this really is where the redstone gets a little bit messy. Now you place a button wherever you want it to be. It can be on this side, it can be on this side. I'm going to do it here for example, for this example. And I'm actually going to try to make it a little bit nicer than my other one by going underground. And okay, good thing that water did not just come follow me. Uh, but anyway, basically I'm going to continue it. And don't worry if it connects if you're going underground like me because we will just be crossing it out like that and then you just want to continue going all the way downwards and if it does hit one of these slabs though over here then yeah you, you might want to just bring it all the way around and then you have to go spiraling down to the very very bottom uh, this just basically connects it so that when you press the button at, at on the top it will basically activate it if you didn't have this then well you'd have to be at the bottom and the splash potions would be a mess so I'm just going to continue going all the way down so now you should have something that kind of looks like this or if you don't that's totally fine as long as the button connects all the way to the bottom so I have all this now the only thing is you do have to make sure the redstone um, the power redstone goes all the way to the bottom so add a few repeaters here and there it can get a little bit confusing so that's going to be powered so that I can go here like that uh, so you just want to keep on doing this until you get to the very bottom yet again now when doing this a few things uh, basically when you're placing the repeater make sure you don't get something like this because this will make an infinite loop which basically means that this will get weaker and then it'll hit this repeater it'll power this block powering this redstone only thing is it comes right back again and it powers this repeater powering this redstone and it makes a loop and it's not good so what you want to do is you just want to get rid of this and you just want to bring it around kind of like that now it will not be an infinite loop now once you block off all this redstone make sure none of it collides with this over here it should start kind of looking like this which is actually a lot better than it looked when I was doing my first one 
Uh, but now if you press this button, cross your fingers, all the TNT gets loaded upwards, and then you get blasted away. Uh, now it is interesting that one piece of TNT came up very, very fast. So I'm going to look for anything that connected with this and made that one piece of TNT. See, that one goes up really fast. There are usually some bugs when doing this for the first time with all the, with all the wiring going all the way down. So I'm just going to go and look for a bug. And I have already found it. This redstone powers that dispenser, which makes the TNT come out much faster than it should. So it's a really simple fix. All you have to do is make sure it does not go on that block. Now if we bring this all back to how it should be, press this button, and all the TNT comes up at relatively the same time. And there we go. So if you're in creative mode, then you can just see by doing it that you'll get blasted very far away very, very fast. And that's great. Whoa. That one's even more powerful than my last one. Huh. That's interesting. Uh, but if you guys are non uh, in creative mode and you're in survival or you're launching a creeper, yeah, you'll definitely die. So what you need to do is you need to get some potions. So what you want to do is you want to first get a uh, blaze and you want to kill it. Hopefully you'll get some, uh, uh, at least one blaze rod. Then what you want to do is you want to mine out three cobblestone. And that way you can make a little brewing stand. Now once you have a brewing stand, you're going to need more blaze rods. So now go kill another blaze. And, ooh. My gosh, the rain is, uh, the blazers are so annoying. And hopefully get some more blaze rods. In this case, I'm out of luck. Now, once you finally do get a blaze rod, what you want to do is you want to turn it into blaze powder. And this can be used to power your brewing stand. You actually put it here. Once you have done that, you want to get a phantom and you want to kill it. You need its phantom membrane just like that and then what you want to do is you want to go get some glass bottles so you obviously are going to need some sand and then you put this in a furnace and then you will get some glass you can put into a crafting table to get some glass bottles so to make a glass bottle what you need to do is you need to just place in three glass just like that now you have three glass bottles and then you need to go fill these up with water. Just any water source, you click it three times to fill up each one. Now, because I'm in creative mode, I still have three glass bottles, but I also did get, apparently, four uh, bottles filled with water. Now, what you want to do is you want to go to your brewing stand, and you want to place in all three of your water bottles. Now, you'll have to take another trip to the nether, because you're going to need some nether warts. And once you put that in, it will start brewing these three water bottles and making them into an awkward potion. Now, an awkward potion does literally nothing. That's why it's called an awkward potion, because it's awkward to have. Uh, but once you have an awkward potion, you can make that into an actual potion. Now, if you put in a phantom membrane, once you have three awkward potions, like so, then it will turn it into a levitating... A slow falling slow falling i believe it's called potion so i'm gonna wait for this to brew so once you have these three potions you can take them out and then if you'd like to you can get out some redstone i don't know if you guys will need it but it's just worth putting it on basically this will extend the time of how long it lasts from one minute and 30 seconds to honestly i don't know how many seconds but it's, it's a decent time well, apparently it will extend it to four minutes. I don't think you guys will need that long, but just if you guys want to. And you cannot extend it any farther. So that was the easy potion to do. Now it's time for the little bit harder one to do. And it's hard because you have to hatch turtle eggs. So what you want to do is you want to get two turtles to mate, like so. And then one of the turtles is going to make a bunch of sand particles. And you have to wait a minute, and they should start to plant an egg. And then eventually you should get some eggs that kind of look like this. Now, just as a quick little tip, if you get a pickaxe or something, and you enchant it into a, a silk touch, 
Oop, TNT in. Uh, then you can actually pick up these eggs. Like, I'm in creative. I need to be in survival. But you you guys get it. You, you have to go into survival. And you can actually pick up these eggs like so. And then you can move these wherever you want. The only thing is they will only hatch if they are on sand. So I'm actually just going to put them back right there. And this is going to be really, really hard, guys, because this is going to take a very, very long time. And I suggest mating them quite a bit because you'll need, you'll need a lot and a lot of eggs. But basically, you're just going to sit here for like 10 hours, probably even more, just waiting for the eggs to hatch. So I suggest going overnight and letting all the eggs that you guys get hatch and then you'll be good. But once the egg does hatch, you'll get a tiny turtle just like this. Look at how cute he is. Oh my gosh, he's so adorable. But what you want to do is you want to then feed him a lot and a lot of seagrass. And any minute now. Any minute. Oh my god, I'm still feeding him, guys. I am still feeding him seagrass. There we go. He'll eventually turn into an adult, and you'll get a scoot. A scoot, I think, I think that's how you pronounce it. So yeah, this is going to take just a very, very long time. Basically, you're going to need five scoots for three potions. So it's, it's going to be a real struggle, struggle guys, but I mean, it's, it's, this, this thing's really cool. And I think it's worth it. So I'm I'm gonna just be sitting here for a day. All right, here we go. We're going to first make this guy grow up. For the record, I didn't actually sit here for ten hours. I just I just destroyed the eggs and spawned some babies. But anyway, we're gonna make them grow up now. Uh, so this is I'm actually gonna do myself, and this is going to take a long time. Oh my gosh, look at how cute these little turtles are! They're swimming! Uh, uh, Minecraft is actually an adorable game at some points. So anyway, I have six cutes. That's more than enough. And you want to make oop, a turtle shell. Now, basically, this can go into a brewing uh, stand. Once you have three awkward potions and you still have power, you put this in and you let it wait. Let it wait. I mean, let it brew. I, I, I can't speak. Now, once you have potions that say slowness uh, four, uh, now what you want to do with your three potions of resistance, you want to place some gunpowder, and this will make it so that they turn into splash potions. Now that you have that, just place some redstone, and this will make it last a little bit longer. You don't really need it, but I like to just do it to have it. Also, make all your uh, slow falling potions splash potions too. Now for the last part, and that is getting all the splash potions and everything together. So what you want to do is you want to put a bunch of splash potions up in this area. By the way, this is one, two, three, four, five, six blocks of water stream, not counting this one right here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. You want to bring it out that far. And then on you go back one and you put your dispenser there and then your a hopper and then a chest on each side. And then you don't have to have these all the way up, but the more you have, the better, the more you can use this machine. And then what you want to do is you just want to start putting them into here. And then uh, that will basically just fill up your dispensers and everything, which is all great. But what we want to do is we need to hook up all of this. Now, if you put the button in the same exact place as me, then you can just copy what I did. If not, then you kind of have to figure it out for your guys for yourself. So basically, the button comes down, it powers all this stuff. The, let's go to the simple place first, which is right over here. It goes underneath. There is water right there, so I'm not going to dig that out because, well, all this redstone would be ruined. But it comes up from this side, up here, up here, into this repeater, which goes into this dispenser. Pretty simple there. Now over here we have a little bit different because, well, there's this. I just wanted to be fancy for this one. But basically, this is really simple. Powers, this gets powered, goes into this repeater, powering this block, powering this dispenser. That's all good. But then it also goes down over here. 
into a very, very long delay, and then into this uh, redstone output extender. It basically extends the output, and then it goes into this uh, redstone, redstone, and then it goes into this block, which unpowers this uh, this redstone torch, which unpowers this block, which unpowers the redstone on top of this block, which unpowers both those pistons. So basically, when that redstone torch is on, then everything is good, these are extended, and the person or creature in here can't really get out unless they travel up the water stream, and well mobs are not that smart. But, I'd pr I don't, I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure it's better to have these blocks removed if you want a longer distance. So what I have done is basically, it makes it so that the pistons retract. Once the TNT is about fire, I've taken off particles for the TNT, so you can see, there it goes, the TNT launches, and then it closes up behind it. So if we go and in, go into here, you can see the doors are closed, opened, TNT blasts us off way into the distance. And that is it, everyone. That That's all we have to do. It's a, it, it is a lot, but it's very cool. And with this, you can get around 200 to 170 to 150 to 140, depending on how many dispensers you put at the beginning. You can make this larger. The only problem is that the larger you make it, the less TNT will get up to the surface. And eventually it just hits a point where it doesn't even matter. Another thing, if you want to make this larger, is you have to be very careful uh, with how much of um, with the redstone output. Make sure it's reaching all the way, or else you have to do that thing where we, at the beginning-ish part that we did, uh, with that repeater, uh, where it basically extended the output. I'll show you guys that right now. Right here, where you have to go through all this and then travel it up. And you just have to do that again, make sure that it reaches all the way to the top. But, anyway, finally we've reached the end. I hope that you guys enjoyed this very long and complicated video. I'm very happy to say that I totally made this up by myself, like, made everything work by myself. I did not get any help, except for the fact of Doc giving me the idea. But I didn't, like, really look at his redstone at all. So, I think that's pretty an awesome tutorial. And I, I really hope that you guys enjoyed it because it was really hard to make. But if you guys did enjoy it, then please hit that like button and please, please hit that subscribe button. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next tutorial or let's play. Goodbye.